All right, Gino, let, let's talk about on today's episode of Devoted to Mentoring. Let's talk about formal ways to mentor and then the informal way to mentor. So kind of two different perspectives here. And let, let's talk about the formal way first. It's really the, uh, I, I think the way we started out on formal mentoring and then it became way informal because we talk about all kinds of stuff. True. But let, let's, let's, let's hit on the Toastmasters side because that's probably where what are our most formal ways of, of mentoring is and, and how we get people into the public speaking stuff and, and how we mentor them through that channel. One of the things I always say is that corporate America, the Fortune 100, 71% of those companies have a formal mentor protege program. And corporate America loves this formality. They want to know everything. Who's meeting with who, how often, when, how long, give me this report, very, very firm, formal, and I don't like that. It works, and I highly recommend that if your company has a mentor program, to join it. Or if you, your university has one, I had one when it was belonged to the mentor protege program at University of Miami through the business school, and I met some really great people there that are still my protégés. So that's the formal way through business, through work, through a boss, even though we said your boss shouldn't be it. No, it's a workplace mentoring program. A workplace program. Environment. And that's where most people or, are going to get introduced to the formal uh, format of, of mentoring. Right. Or, like you mentioned, Toastmasters. At Toastmasters, we do assign you a mentor. You don't have to take that mentor. You can choose your own mentor. But we highly encourage that you get a mentor because... It's nice to be shown how to get on pathways, how to log on to the website, how to take on roles. Those are those technical things not, that not you just, need help. Not, before all that, just how to show up. People will come, they'll, they'll go to a couple meetings, they'll become a member, and then they're, they are scared out of their pants, ner more nervous than a cup of coffee. You know, and they... They need that mentor. They need that person to encourage them to to go. And then when you start achieving small goals like that by just showing up, taking on a couple of functionary roles, you know, delivering an icebreaker and, and that, that mentor, you did it to me in Toastmasters. There yeah. was it's like and that's what happens in our informal side of the mentoring is you accomplish one simple task that you think is huge. And then I don't get done with it 10 or 15 minutes later and you're, you're throwing the next one at me. <laughs> it's like, and then it's never, we never stop. What's funny about it is that I don't even know I'm doing it. You don't just do it. And then I started doing it to people. Because it's, it's just, it's so, it's so rewarding. When you, when you get, when that formal mentoring side, when you, when you're achieving something, when you, when you see that person growing and, you know, conquering their goals and, I mean, the fear of public speaking is one of the it's things huge. that, I mean, if you can conquer that, I mean, there's a lot of things in your future. And yeah. so we like the, I like the formal program in Toastmasters. The informal side is way more fun. Way more re rewarding. Way more well. rewarding, way more fun when you're just surrounded by a bunch of, you know, high-level individuals like-minded like-minded similar values for us it's crazy about our club at Toastmasters but most of the people that come there seem to be entrepreneurs and I and I think it's one of the reasons why is because our club meets so early in the morning it, it captures this professional crowd we meet at 7 30 a.m. every Thursday morning at Irby University and anybody that gets up at 7 a.m. and is ready to throw on their public speaking outfit on a Thursday morning in front of 37 of their fellow professional peers, you know that's a high level individual. High level functioning. Yeah, so the, the informal side is, is way more fun and where I've found that the mentoring where I, I like to do. Here's the thing about mentoring too, it's exemplified by our relationship where, you know, there's days when I mentor you but there's days when you mentor me. Yeah. And it's so rewarding. And that's there's some, the... There's some days where you're my mentor in the morning. <laughs> I'm yours in the, in the afternoon. Yeah, you know, with technology, 
I'm not technologically challenged, a little bit, not a lot, but I've been around computers since my college days. I see this great opportunity where these other generations, other than the baby boomers, boomers can impart all this mentorship and knowledge and experience on people. Maybe they're a little weak on the technological side, and that's where you, as a more technologically advanced because you grew up with the thing, can teach your mentor that. So I see it as a nice symbiotic relationship. And, and the generation that came after me is teaching me things too. There you go. So uh, some of the things I try and they're like, oh, professor, that, that's, that's so 30 years ago. And I'm like, I thought this was cutting edge. And they're like, no, here, come check this out. Yeah. So they're, they're showing us stuff too. And, and, and that's, that's the fun part yeah. about mentoring. It's not, it's not so serious all the time. Yeah, and it's not all about money or gain or nah. some kind of material thing. No, it, it, the feeling that I get when I, when I hear these stories, like the kid I told you about that I ran into the hallway, he said, hey, professor, you know, you helped me so much that what I do now that I have my professional job in construction management is I help others. And it's just this wave that goes out into the world because you help one person and that person helps two and two help two and two, two, and it but just that's the, spreads like that's wildfire. That's the giving part of this, this whole, I mean, and it's probably the biggest issue that we have as society these days is there's not enough people giving. There's too many takers. There's too many people taking. Yeah. And so if you can get that, mindset of, of giving and the rewards will come in return. I, I have, when I'm mentoring, when I'm giving to people, I don't have any expectations. That's key For, to first, coming into it. First thing is don't have any expectations because if the mentee gives up, then you feel like, you know, you feel like, oh, I, I'm, I've lost I'm a failure, uh, you know. And it happens a lot of times with the coaches too. They'll be coaching somebody and then the person just drops off and they feel like they're, you know, they're a bad coach or something. And we see this, you know, yeah, all the you, time. Yeah, if you go in thinking you're going to sell that person something or you're going to make money off that person or you're going to have some kind of gain, that's not going to work. That can't be the forefront. The forefront is an open relationship where you're imparting knowledge for free. Some of the, some of the best uh, mentor relationships I have with people is there it's a two-way street i'm always giving of of them of of something my time my knowledge my talent whatever it is and then they turn around and they give me something back and we don't even there's zero expectations of it it just happens naturally or i'll i'll know per, i'll know a person that knows about something and i'll call them up and they're like totally willing to give the information up yeah. and that's because we have a, a good uh, what, you know, a mentor, protege, mentee, you call it whatever you want. And then sometimes those relationships build into something uh, bigger. 